Hey guys, let's talk about this coronavirus. Cause right now, Corona is shaking up everybody's room. You know what I'm saying? To all the bad bitches around the world. I don't give a fuck what a bitch say. Bitch, I'm the shit. I'm a cocky little bitch. That's one thing I did say. Here to check up on my YouTube family and just see, you know, how you guys doing because this is really um trying time. I don't know about you guys, but I've been through a lot of phases within the last maybe three weeks. I want to say three weeks is probably when I started getting really serious about, you know, the, taking the precautions and started really noticing the things that was going on. Like three weeks ago, I posted my first video for 2020, which was CIAA weekend in North Carolina. It was my best friend's last birthday wish. She wanted to see her favorite Jamaican artist, which is Dexter Dabs. If you haven't had a chance, if you're new to my channel, look at some of my old videos. Like, don't judge me right now. Look at some of my old videos. If you're looking for something crazy, wild, and just somebody real is me. I might My face might not be real because I be having a lot of makeup on, but at the end of the day, I'm real. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about this. It's about this. Okay? <laughs> but anyway... That's when I kind of start really taking heed to it. Maybe three weeks ago, um, I learned about coronavirus literally months ago from my daughter. My daughter is really into Chinese culture. She's into Japanese culture. Like she's into the whole Asian culture, period. Like she's an artist and she follows a lot of manga. You know, anyone who knows about all of that would know what I'm talking about. So she was the first person that's ever brought that to me. And I want to say she brought that to me since 2019. She came to me. She's like, oh, mama, we fitting to die. Because, you know, we crack jokes like that in the house. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, we're going to die of the coronavirus. And I want to say this was like in December. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about, little girl? Anyway, I didn't pay her any attention. She was like, oh, it's a virus in China going on right now. And I didn't pay any attention. As time and time was going, I'm hearing more about it. I'm starting to see the things on social media, just like you. And I was like, wait, Lania, this is real. She was like, yeah, people are literally dying over this um, virus or whatever. So that's when I started taking heed to it. So me and my best friend, we went on a trip at the end of February because her birthday was February. We went to New York. She had a big old extravaganza. Even then, I wasn't really thinking about it. It wasn't until we went to North Carolina, like I said, three weeks ago, the end of February, is when it was really kind of like hitting mainstream USA. So then I'm like, okay, we got to take precautions. But it still wasn't really like that serious. Like we were still doing events. We were still eating in restaurants. You know, it was still, it, it, it's like we hear about it, but it wasn't like really out there like that. So... When I came back home is when it really hit the fan. Like, um, I'm starting to see it now on our TV because I kind of, I really don't watch the news, guys. So I just was kind of going off a of he say, she say from my like coworkers. Then I noticed that my company started changing policies. Again, for those of you who are new and don't know who I am, I work for the airline. I am a flight attendant. So... You know, we were getting these briefings. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> What's really going on? And here go my daughter. Like, I told you, mama. I told you, mama. So I want to say maybe two weeks ago, I started like stocking up, getting my stockpiles together while everyone was still cracking jokes, sending those memes. You've probably seen those memes when they compare the coronavirus to like the flu. I got a couple of friends that laughed at me and was like, you really, really like you going overboard. I did, mind you, I started this maybe three weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago. So I'm getting a lot of my friends, they laughing at me. They think I'm bugging. They like the um, flu kills more people than this coronavirus. But something in my spirit told me this is a little different. Like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear your statistics. I don't want to see your memes. I don't want to compare nothing to no flu because as long as I've been alive, the flu been around. And I ain't never in my life seen the world respond the way they're responding to this. 
So with that being said, guys, this is something that nobody knows how to react to. Nobody has ever been through it because we've never really been through anything like this. Like I've had a lot of friends tell me, oh, this is not that we've been through Ebola. We've been through Spanish flu, bird flu. What? I'm about to say Spanish fly. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all laughing right now. <laughs> By the way, for women, that shit didn't work for me. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I've been through Spanish flu, bird flu, um, swine. Is it swine flu? Don't get me. Listen, listen, I'm going to tell you. We'll get to that later. Anyway, I've been through all of that. I have never in my life seen the nation respond this way. Notice I said nation. I'm not saying country or state. Nation, the world, respond the way it's responded to any of those things we said. Like I said, I've been a flight attendant through Ebola. Ebola is supposed to be one of the Spanish flu and Ebola is supposed to be one of the biggest like epidemics that was around. And I was still a flight attendant through those stages. And I remember going to like Haiti, like places that it was like prevalent, even though it was more like Africa or whatever. But I remember going through customs in different countries. All they would do, they'll be there with their little suits on. They'll take your temperature. If you pass the temperature, they'll let you go. I've never seen anyone shut down flights for any of those viruses. I've never seen the stock market crash for any of those viruses. If I'm wrong, quote me, put it in the comments. I have personally never seen it. I've never seen a whole country quarantine. I've never seen, listen, my thoughts on the coronavirus is this is planned. This is, has to happen for whatever reasons. And at this point, guys, you cannot stress about it. I went through it. I stressed about it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I wasn't scared. No, there was a time where I was scared. Like, I was scared. I was freaking out. <sighs> you don't even want to know what the things I was saying and things I was going through. But I did freak out. But now I'm at a point where I'm calm. I'm realizing that, you know, things in life have to happen. Just like the dinosaurs went through an extension and you hear about the bones today like that's all evolution things have to happen i don't i don't want to really get too technical about biblical versus spiritual but if you come across this video you know what i'm talking about these things have to happen one thing I'm mad about, though, why it gotta happen while I'm alive? Like, damn, you know, every time <laughs> when my godmom introduced me to church and the Lord, I always knew about God from my mom, but I didn't know the extent of it as far as biblically, like the Bible, until I met my god sister and her mom. And like, she introduced me to the actual Bible. And I started learning about revelations and everything. So it's like right now, a lot of people are referencing the revelations to what's going on. A lot of people are actually saying this might be the end of the world. Do I believe it's the end of the world? No. Do I believe it's a new revolution or some type of new world order? Something new. Just like September 11th. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. Like September 11th, 9-11 brought a whole new order to the world whereas tsa was introduced whereas the way you travel the way you fly is completely different prior 9 11 before you can literally go to the gate you could bring your your kid to the gate just walk to the gate put them on a plane all that has changed so something is implementing into our life where things are about to change and you just have to embrace it you can't change it it's nothing you can do about it so many people's like I'm watching on social media. So many people's is crying. Oh my God, my job. Oh my God, I'm furloughed. Some people got paid leave depending on what you do for a living. This is my take on it. My industry is one of the hardest industries getting hit. Like I said, I'm a flight attendant. Airline industry right now, think about it. Nobody wants to travel and for a company to sustain, they have to start like furloughing and coming up with packages, unpaid leaves. It's, it's, it's really crazy. And I'm not saying it ain't crazy in your industry because I believe a situation like this is affecting everybody. It's not just us. 9-11 was probably more so the travel industry. This isn't even just about the travel industry. This is about everybody. Like every 
freaking body. Like I have friends right now that's trying to sell their properties. Nobody's buying a freaking house right now because you don't know what's going to happen. I have people who make six figures a year that's trying to go get jobs that's probably going to make 25000 a year. Like people are desperate. It's a crazy time right now. Am I nervous as far as like financial reasons? I was. Right now, I'm really not. Listen, I bought me a gun. <laughs> Listen, things get high, I pull out that little nine millimeter. I'm like, but nah, all jokes aside, I did. I really bought me a gun. I have a lot of people that are saying, um, have faith. They're throwing a lot of biblical scriptures and showing where God is saying he got you. And I totally believe it. But at the end of the day, He's also giving you time to prepare. Prepare. I do believe God got me. I know God got me. I know my spiritual God's got me. Whatever you want to call it. I know we'll be fine. But you still have to prepare. That doesn't mean you don't have to buy your waters. That don't mean you have to get your, your fridge stocked. That don't mean those things. You still have to prepare. But he got you. Do what you got to do. Prepare. Because I truly believe there will be a complete shutdown. I feel like they can't just throw it in there like it's a shutdown because, you know, they have to get the guards ready, army, whatever you want to call it, ready. They got to make sure you got your food prepared. That's why they got this whole Trump giving out money to everyone because they want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity. If you choose not to do that with it, that's on you. But at least no one can feel guilty and say, oh, they let the nation down. This is just my opinion, guys. Don't quote me on it. Don't kill me in the comments <laughs> but this is my interpretation of it like i'm gonna give you guys money because this is what's about to happen we about to shut this month motherfucker damn <laughs> it's happening y'all so that's why they're implementing curfews you know trying to get america comfortable with being stuck in the house <laughs> Just get prepared. <laughs> get prepared. I do believe it's going to be a shutdown. Do I believe the world is ending? No. <laughs> but it is funny. Like, I seen a meme, literally probably yesterday, about, like, the zombie apocalypse. There's a lot of zombie apocalypse memes going around. And this is my favorite. <laughs> Somebody was like, Dear Lord, <laughs> if there is going to be a zombie apocalypse, please let it be. I forgot what they referenced, but basically like an old school zombie movie versus a new school zombie movie because I can't be messing with these zombies that can run faster than me, which is true. <laughs> when I tell you I laugh from the gut, oh my God. I know I'm going all over the place, but this is my way of, oh, guys, don't judge. Not going on my waist trainer. <laughs> this is what happened when you were on quarantine. Even though I'm still working, but my whole family's on quarantine. And I got all this food in the house, and I keep snacking. I'm going to be like 500 pounds if this thing don't hurry up and end. The gyms are closed. I can't go to the gym. I'm just cooking and eating. But anyway, that's another story. Back to the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, I it, it brought me back memories because the first zombie movie I've ever seen in my life was a movie called Night of the Living Dead. It was black and white, and my mom introduced it to me because that was her favorite movie. And it's like when that meme came out, I was thinking like, okay, that movie, this is how the zombies used to walk. They'd be like this. Brains. They was just saying brains, like brains. Like somebody in a bridal gown, you like bright. I do not remember the name, but I will figure out the name and add it to this video 
So by now you see what the movie was that she introduced me. So I'm gonna put it right here. It's subtitles. It was originally, it's actually produced in China. And when I tell you this movie is bomb for those of you guys who are quarantined and trying to figure out things to do. If you got Netflix, watch this movie. It is so good. I never thought I could watch a subtitle movie, but this movie is bomb. Let me show you how those zombies go, all right? I'm going to give you a little rendition of it. So there's a scene. If y'all watch this movie, y'all going to see the zombies. They, they're basically on a train, a train in China. They're trying to get to one point in China to the next, right? <laughs> you see how the first, the, the first rendition of zombies was when I was a child. My mom watched Night of the Living Dead in black and white, right? <laughs> you got time to shoot them even if you miss a couple times you still got time to get the bullet in their head watch how these zombies work so these zombies right if you, the, the theory of the movie is they can't see in the dark so picture basically the um the woke people have you want to call it the people who were not zombies not i guess humans zombies are humans they're just dead humans but you know what i mean the non-zombies caught on that they cannot see you in the dark. So you could be like standing right in front of them in the dark. They're just going to be like this, right? So this scene is them in the dark. But watch how they move opposed to the brains version of zombies, right? So now the train went into a tunnel. It's completely dark. So they like this. And all they got in here is just a sound because they can't see, right? So they'll be like, ah! They'll be like... Everything is so serious. I don't know about your timelines, but my timelines, everything, all I see is Trump, Trump, Trump. All I see is jokes about parents that are homeschooling. I see jokes about the Corona. I just see jokes. Like literally it's just all either jokes or an update. And it's like, the shit is going to make you go crazy. So I just wanted to put this video out there. I don't know. You might think it's corny, but for me, I thought it was hilarious. That whole meme about the zombies, old old school zombies versus new zombies was like real. So my message, guys, to you is let it go. It's nothing you can do. This is supposed to happen. It's going to happen. It's nothing you can do about it. And just remember, for those of you who are freaking out, stressing out about, oh my God, how I'm going to pay my bills. Oh my God, my job just let me go. Just remember, it's not just you, honey. It's everybody. Everybody's going to be affected some kind of way or fashion. Everyone's going to be affected. Um... Wake up every morning and thank God that you're still alive and don't have the virus. Focus on the of staying safe. Focus on washing your hands. Focus on the fact that some of you are quarantined, which is good. Like right now, I'm not quarantined. My job has, has not closed. I'm still flying. I'm on planes with hundreds of people, going to different places. I could be stuck in another state. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be grateful for those of you who are quarantined. Just be happy that you're home. Make the best of it. Teach your kids how to play spades. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you can't be one of us playing spades and don't know what you're doing. Teach your kids how to play spades. <laughs> but no, real talk. Spend time with your family. Everything, there's a dark and a good, a light. You know what I'm saying? So just focus on the light side of things and just remember that it's a replenish. It had to happen. It's just unfortunate. It had to happen in our lifetime. But you know why it happened in our lifetime? Because they know we could deal with it. You know what I'm saying? They know we can deal with it. We got this. So breathe. 
relax, and just know everything is going to work out. But some of y'all are going to die. Some of y'all going to catch it and die. And I, it's okay. It was your time. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm being honest. Like, guys, I don't know what else to say, but I just wanted to talk to my um, YouTube family. I love you guys so much. And reach out to me if you need to talk about anything. If anybody's stressed out because they still out in the community working, listen, I'm one of them too. You can reach out to me. We can talk shit about our companies together, okay? Because come a couple of weeks from now, a weeks from now, I might not even have a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not stressing. Keep your bars full. For those of you who don't drink, keep it full anyway. Because you never know. You might want to get drunk on your last day on earth, right? Love you guys. <laughs>